we saw what he'd done in the past between 42 and Get On Up, there were two uh, representations of, of people that were known to the public, right? Jackie Robinson and James Brown, very public figures, very larger than life figures in their own way. I think Jackie Robinson, the stoicism and the strength of his character was something that people who had seen him play or met him in real life really respond to. James Brown, it's sort of that larger than life character. So we knew that Chadwick had the acting chops. Um, and we knew that Black Panther needed to feel singular. It couldn't just be a guy off the street who looked good. It had to be somebody who was gonna bring an integrity to the role that felt like a different tone than what Robert Downey brings to Tony Stark, what Chris Evans brings to Captain America, even what, with what Chris Hemsworth brings to Thor. But again, you never really know until you get on set. You know, we'd had a ton of conversations with Chadwick who is, I think, so prepared as an actor that he read all the comic books, he came with a list of questions, he had his own ideas of what the dialect should sound like, he had his own ideas of how Wakanda worked. Um, but you don't know until you get on set. And once we started shooting with him, we realized there was something really special. And I think it actually raised the game of everybody else on set. My son, it is your time. Show me my respect and bow down. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. We knew that we wanted a really strong central female character, and Lupita brings such integrity to everything that she does, and she's so strikingly beautiful, that we thought that pairing with Chadwick was gonna be really compelling. Uh, and what's great about Nakia is, you know, she doesn't always see eye to eye with T'Challa, so there is some natural friction there that we get to play both for drama, but also for some laughs. Uh, and she gets to give a physical performance because the Dora are so active, because they are fighters, uh, and that they can hold their own in any situation. I waited my entire life for this. The world's gonna start over. I'm gonna burn it all. His relationship with Ryan Coogler is such that they have a very strong creative bond. And we knew on our side that we wanted somebody for Eric Killmonger, our main villain, who could hold the screen against Chadwick. So we'd already talked about how intense and, and sort of professional Chadwick is in his scenes. What we couldn't have is a villain that would shrink uh, against that energy. You know, Eric Killmonger is somebody from publishing that we've talked about for a lot of years. He is sort of the main adversary to the Black Panther, and he's someone with his own idea of how Wakanda should work. So here is this fictional African nation that's the most advanced nation in the world, yet is secluded and has sort of uh, cloistered themselves from the rest of the world. And that's something that T'Challa, as the new king, plans to keep carrying on. Well. Eric Killmonger has a very different idea of how Wakanda should be positioned in the world and how they should use their resources, both technologically and financially, to change the way the world works. And I think that tension of two men who have two varying degrees of opinions as to how Wakanda works is what the film is built around. The revolution will be live.